As many designers do, I love watching movies. I think watching movies is a really great way to spend some downtime, but also get inspirations from great artists around the world. Here's a short list of some of my favorite movies that I think a lot of architects would also appreciate. Number one on the list is Inception. A lot of people might have seen this coming. Inception is a widely popular and mind-blowing movie directed by Christopher Nolan in back in 2010. Now, in this movie, architects do a lot more than just designing physical world. They actually design the dreams. And th in these dreams, architects can simply conjure up their imagination and make it inhabitable by projections of their imagination. Now, even though this idea of designing and projecting anything is very romantic, there are actually very severe consequences to making mistakes. For example, in this movie, there are three main architects that are presented. Number one, Nash. He makes a crucial mistake of applying a wrong texture onto the carpet within Saito's dream. This takes Nash out of the whole equation and makes the whole plan fail. We don't even know what happens to Nash. He might have been killed, deported, who knows. But the consequences are severe. And this is even more exaggerated within Cobb's dream where his projections of his former wife keeps interrupting um, a lot of the crucial moments in the mission and also presents the team with a lot of difficulties like a random train rushing through the urban street and armed people trying to attack them all the time. But probably the biggest consequence that he suffered is the death of his wife. This introduces the idea of injecting ideas into people's dream, which is the whole premise of the movie. And last of all, Adrienne is the last architect that we're presented with. She's slightly more of a rookie designer, but she proves to be very skillful. Now, nonetheless, despite the risks, the world presents you with this idea of creating this paradoxical structures and making this Escher-like structures possible. And even simply bending this fabric of urban space is just so cool to see. And this movie is great in terms of storyline, but also with pure eye candy in terms of the graphics. So strongly recommend watching it if you haven't already, although I kind of doubt it, but that was my analysis and the reason why I like this movie. Let's go to number two. Number two on my list is 2001 Space Odyssey, directed by Stanley Kubrick back in 1968. Now the time here is actually kind of important because this is often called, referred to as like the beginning of space tropes. So structures such as rotating space station and AI guided space travel, all these things really sound like a common things that we think of when we when it comes to like a space odyssey. But you have to keep in mind that this is directed in 1968. And back then, general public had not really visualized this and it wasn't a common thing. So much so that people used this movie as an evidence to prove that lunar landing was fake. <laughs> Because this movie was just so far ahead of its time in terms of the graphics and the concept and the physics that they've figured out. So you can imagine how crazy it was for people to watch it at that time. Not only that, there are two very specific incidents where I find especially inspiring. So number one is the presence of the monolith. This structure appears whenever there's a giant leap of human evolution. So it's kind of presents itself as like a higher being that kind of accelerates our knowledge or advancements. But what I really love about the design of this object is that it's just a solid minimalistic block that just kind of stands there and we don't even know what it's saying. But it goes to show how minimalism can be a really powerful object to convey deep meaning and impact to the audience. And cherry on top, it looks just like the Seagram building designed by Mies van der Rohe. And you know, personally, I think that building has this power of monolith when you actually see it. And the second scene that I really enjoy is also a bedroom scene. And to me, this is like the singularity moment where the past and the future kind of coexist and converge all onto itself. And in this scene, the main character, Ballman, ages quickly and becomes a space child. So it almost feels like the entire lifespan of this person exists in this space. And that is actually represented in the architectural design of the space. So if you look closely, the furniture look very classical, has this innate ornamental style applied to them. 
but at the same time the floor and the wall are extremely minimalistic and the whole room is lit from below with this futuristic um, LED or fluorescent light like effect and I feel like this is representing how the future and the present or the future and the past is coexisting in this space so extremely well executed visual communication here and Space Odyssey goes to uh, one of my favorite movies, War Architects. Okay, next up on the list is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Now this is favorite for a lot of people. Now we're swinging way on the other side in terms of the aesthetic and the theme. This movie is tells a story of a concierge and his protege who becomes entangled in this series of adventure at a famous European hotel. Wes Anderson as a director has an amazing sense of aesthetic and always has this very symmetrical and vibrant color schemes in his set. Now his attention to detail also creates this whimsical yet structured visual experience. The reason why I think this is relevant to architects is because it demonstrates the impact of design and aesthetic in the storytelling in an emotional engagement. You can kind of see how the color plays into part, especially when despite some of the dire themes that this movie deals with such as loss of loved ones and being framed for criminal, having this um, overlying, almost fairy tale like color scheme and aesthetic makes you feel like everything is gonna be okay at the end of the day. Okay, and that brings us to the last movie, which is American Psycho from 2000. This is really relevant to architects because it shows the shallow and vicious aspects of capitalism in which we unfortunately have to work with. I'm just joking about this movie, by the way. So let's move on to the actual last movie on the list. The movie, the last movie on the list is Blade Runner 1982 and Blade Runner 2049. Both of these movies are set in a dystopian future where Blade Runner must track down and eliminate bioengineer things known as replicants. What's really interesting about these movies is the discussion between like what is real and what is human and um, that becomes really confusing because sometimes humans really act like they're robots and sociopaths and other times robots seem to display a sense of emotion. I wouldn't let him. Why not? I should be in it for him. This film was a really good representation of the theme called cyberpunk. It's a world where mega corporations basically own the government and society and most common folks are kind of uh, degraded into this poverty line, living in uh, alleyways of slums and very unfortunate settings. And what's really great about cyberpunk and dystopian theme is that it kind of goes to, kind of works as like a telltale sign of what can happen if we allow the society to fall into disarray and into deep capitalism. When the original movie was released, people were totally mind blown by the scale of the structures that inhabit the city. And of course, the movie makers have to use a lot of interesting tricks to make this happen, and the visuals are just amazing. And the same goes for the second movie that came out more recently. Every scene is almost like a cinematographic masterpiece, and it's just a pure eye candy to watch, and also ponder about the nature of consciousness and what makes us human. And there are several legendary shots that are all over the place in Pinterest and whoever that designed the set really had a lot of fun with this and continues to provide great inspirations for architects so really appreciate this piece of art if you haven't watched it already I strongly recommend checking it out so I brought up this list um, out of the more mainstream list but I'll also follow up with another video about slightly more niche still mainstream videos um, movies so stay tuned for that and for those who are new to the channel, I make videos for architects and students. So if you're interested, give it a follow, thumbs up, and subscribe. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video.